Hey y'all, let's take a look at how we can call JavaScript from a Blazor WebAssembly app and call back to Blazor WebAssembly from JavaScript. So I have a very simple Blazor WebAssembly application here. It is empty. That's all you get, hello world, right? So that's really all there is, just an index file. I'm also using Visual Studio Code and this T-Sharp dev kit. You can use Visual Studio, use whatever makes you happy. It's totally fine. All right, so let's take a look at how we do this. So what we're gonna do is call a very simple JavaScript function. It's not gonna be complex, but what we wanna do is add a button here. So let's add a button. And then um, what we wanna do is just prompt the user. So we're gonna prompt the user for some input, then display that input on the page. Um, and so what we wanna do here is have a click event for this button that executes our JavaScript. Uh, and so let's go ahead and add that uh, method here on click and we'll just say prompt user and then that's going to be a method down here in our code. Uh, and you can see Copilot is trying to help us out here. I don't think this needs to be an async task. I think just private void prompt user will work just fine. It's trying to, do, trying to get ahead of me a little bit. There's nothing here for now. This is an empty function. We need to write the JavaScript that we're going to call. So let's do that first. So there's sort of two different ways that we can call JavaScript from Blazor, and it depends on where we put the JavaScript. And so we'll do it both ways. So one of the ways is that we can put it in the www root. So let's create a new file here, and I'll show you a trick in VS Code. If you want a new file, but you want to put it in a folder, if you specify the folder name first, and then you put the file name, it gives you the file and the folder. Pretty cool. All right, so inside of our JavaScript file here, let's write some JavaScript. Seems legit. So let's have a function here called prompt user. And then Copilot's helping us out here. Thank you very much. Uh, this is all we're gonna do is just show a prompt. Prompt is a built-in API in the browser that shows the prompt. You'll see this here in just a second. Now the question is, how do we actually call this? Um, and it's important to note that when you include JavaScript like this, like from a main file, you're gonna include it in your index.html page. So we'll add the script here, set the source to uh, main.js, and this will import the JavaScript file. But when that happens, where does this function go? Well, it gets attached to the window object of the document, which is not good. Uh, and so what we can do here, a trick that has been used for a long time uh, when you have to do this, is to create your own special global variable that will be on the window object. And then you put everything that you want to access inside of that so that you aren't just cluttering up the window object. Everything is inside this my app variable. And then we want this prompt user function, which is gonna look a little different here. Copilot helping us out. That's exactly what we want. Come down and take this out. All right, so now how do we actually uh, use this in the application? Well, first of all, let's make sure that we're building, everything looks good. If we go back to our page here and refresh, let's just make sure that that JavaScript's being loaded in. It is right here. And let's go to our console and you can see that the my app is on the window. And so we can call my app dot prompt user and that will actually show the prompt uh, and then we can answer, right? That's all we're doing here. And so what we wanna do is show from this click here, that prompt user, do we need to call that JavaScript in this method here? So what we wanna do here is we're going to be using the IJS runtime to do this. So we're gonna inject that, the IJS runtime. You can see Copilot helping us out. Thank you, Copilot. And then my guess is Copilot's probably gonna know what I wanna do next, kind of. Uh, so what we wanna do here is we're gonna say JS runtime, JS runtime dot invoke void async because our method isn't returning anything. And then we're gonna prompt, we're gonna do my app, right? And it was called prompt user. And that's really all we need to do. The JavaScript's already loaded, it gets loaded on page load. So all we have to do is call it. It was prompt user, right? Yeah, prompt user. So um, just double checking here, but I believe this is all we have to do to actually show the prompt. So let's make sure we rebuilt, we did. And then let's go back, refresh, click the button, and there we go. So at this point, we're calling the JavaScript from the Blazor app, uh, we can put our name in. So let's make this a little more complicated to show how we can do other things. So let's put an input in here, input, and uh, let's bind this input to um, what we wanted to, we'll just call this prompt message here. 
this, this doesn't exist yet type of text. And then we'll come down in our code and let Copilot help us out with a prompt message. Hello from C Sharp. That sounds fine. Actually, we'll just set this to an empty string for now. Um, and then we want to pass this prompt message as the prompt to show. And so anytime you want to pass a variable to your JavaScript function, just pass it just like that. And then we just need to add it here. So call it prompt message. And then we'll take out all of this, put the prompt message in. And now we're actually passing the prompt message as a variable. So if you go back, it says hello from, and actually, I'm um, looking here, that's not our, our message, our, um, our prompt message is empty, right? And if we can't, if we're having trouble with this, then we need to go back and restart the application here. So I'm gonna shut this down, let's restart. It's pretty quick, no problem. Just let this thing uh, build, all right. And then it's probably gonna open a different tab. All right, so there we go. So we can say, what is your favorite color? and then prompt user, and you see what is your favorite color, and we'll say blue. All right, so the last thing we need to do is handle that call back into Blazor WebAssembly. So first of all, let me put the input down here below the H1, which is a little weird. Uh, and then here, like how are we gonna call back? So the first thing that we're gonna need is a self-reference. Um, and the self-reference will be referencing this particular component. Uh, and we don't want, this is actually not right, what we want is a .NET object reference here, right? And it's gonna be of type index, right? Because that's the page, and so that's the type here. And then we'll just call it, we can just call it self. Um, I don't like the underscore pattern there, it's called self. Um, and then what we want, we need to actually uh, create this thing. And so we're gonna do that when the component renders. So we're doing it after render here. And then if it is the first render, right, on after render, if it is the first render, we're going to create that uh, object reference here as self. And then again, we're just gonna pass this, right, because we can just pass parameters. We're gonna pass it as a parameter to the prompt user. Let's go back, you know, let's call this component. And what happens in JavaScript is when you call this prompt, JavaScript sort of hangs out here waiting for an answer and it doesn't execute anything below this line. This is one of the few synchronous things in JavaScript. Um, there are some of them, this is one. And so it's safe for us to do this on the next line to call back into Blazor. So if we say call back into Blazor from here, Copilot will probably help us out. Yeah, so we're gonna call the invoke method async on our component, which we passed in. And we just need a, method to call and it's giving us one here this doesn't exist we'll have to call it and then we're going to pass in the answer that the user gives so let's create a function that we can call back into right so first of all we need to decorate it as js invocable and then it's going to go ahead and generate that for us i think we did call it prompt user callback right prompt user callback yeah that's right and you can see it's passing the message and then prompt message isn't quite right. We want this user response. This doesn't exist yet, but because we are using Copilot, we can do this. And then when we come back up here, it will know what we wanna do next. It will create that for us. And it will probably know what we wanna do next if we, um, if string is not null or equal, user response, user response. Okay, so Copilot anticipating our next move, giving us the code we want. All right, so with all this, <laughs> If everything's done correctly, uh, we did have a, uh, a, a root edit, so we'll go ahead and reload that. We have a warning. Looks like um, we have a check for a null case here. We can actually just mark this as null, um, and then we may have to check for it later on. No, it doesn't look like we do. Okay, so let's go back to our page. Let's go ahead and refresh, uh, and we must be building. Are we building? Let's go back. Yeah, there we go. So let's go ahead and say, um, what is your name? Okay, and then we will prompt the user. This will show the prompt and we'll say Burke. If you did everything right, it should show up on the page here. Let's click okay. Yes, user response, Burke. So at this point we're calling into JavaScript from WebAssembly and we're calling back out of JavaScript to WebAssembly, passing parameters back and forth. This is very cool. So the only other thing I wanna show you here is the other way that you can structure this. Um, so let's go ahead and let's add here under pages, 
um, and index.razor.js. Okay, so we can put our JavaScript right next to the page where it's used or right next to the component where it's used and only load it when that page or component is shown, which is pretty cool. And what that means is we can take this code, let's just copy everything out of here, and then we can just delete this all together, which feels good. Deleting code feels so good. And then in our index, we can remove the script file. So we no longer are putting th anything on the window, which is nice. All right, so how does this work? Well, in this file here, because we are importing this, we're gonna import it, um, we're gonna get a scoped reference to the JavaScript, which means it won't be on the window. So we can have a function, we can get rid of this. This is function prompt user, okay, just like we were doing before. Um, let me just change this. All right, and the only other thing we need to do is we need to use the JavaScript keyword to export this out. So we're exporting a function that we need to import in our component or page. It's a little bit different here. Let's go back to our index page and let's create a, up here, how we have a self-reference. Let's create a JavaScript module reference. Um, and that'll work. And then down here in our first render, we're going to define that reference. So first of all, we need to make this an async task on after render async. And then underneath this nude up self-reference, this created self-reference, we're gonna take this module and we're gonna say, uh, await JS runtime. This looks all, this is pretty close here. The only thing that we wanna change here is that it's under pages and then it's called uh, index.razor.js. Uh, so what's happening here? We are invoking this, we're importing, it's gonna import this JavaScript file, it's gonna store it in the module and then we can execute any functions or, or, or methods that we've created in the JavaScript from this module reference, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So down here, instead of JS runtime, this becomes module um, and we're going to await this. Uh, in fact, I don't think we need to await this. I think this will work just like this. Yeah, and then let's see what Copilot will want to do about the null reference here. Looks like it's just going to wrap it. We'll take that, checking if it's null. Everything else pretty much stays the same here, um, except for it's not on my app, it's just prompt user. We're still passing the message, we're still passing a self reference. And the one thing that we didn't do that we should do is dispose of the self-reference here. There we go. Okay. Um, and with that, we should be able to go back to the application. Let's make sure we're rebuilding here. We are back to our application reload. Um, did you like this video and prompt the user? There we go. Loved it. Okay. We get the message back. So there you go. That's how you can call into JavaScript from Blazor WebAssembly and back out of JavaScript to Blazor WebAssembly. Two ways to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful.